Hello there. Today we're going to tie this. This is going to be a big articulated uh, pike fly in some really, really awesome colors. This is a fairly easy fly, although it looks a bit advanced. Then uh, uh, the number of materials also is not that great. Uh, a lot of a lot of articulated flies are out there, and they look absolutely astounding. So this is my take on that, and I've tried to incorporate um, first of all some weight into this fly, and also I've tried to design it so so it fishes well. First of all, that this fly really, really fishes well and is fairly easy to tie um, using an absolute minimum of, of materials. So, uh, first of all we're gonna use some shanks. Um, these are just some, yeah, whatever shanks you have is, is good. These are about four centimeters long and that's a good size for this. And, uh, and the articulated part of this is, as you can see down here, we have some articulation which will make this fly uh, swim uh, very very well in, uh, in the water. So basically um, what we need for this is some bucktail in two different colors, gray and fluorescent yellow. Then we're gonna need a shank, a hook of course, and then some uh, some predator strings, crab fur strings, some beads and some gold heads, and then some uh, some eyes and uh, and a bit of flesh. So <laughs> even though I say you do not require that many materials, uh, well, this is fairly light compared to a lot of the other stuff that is out there. So basically, I start off by. Um, by making sure that uh, that my shank here is is closed, and uh, and this is important because the shank here offers a lot of uh, a lot of different options. Oh, I can see this is not completely tuned. Uh, that's better, I think. Like so, yeah, yeah. Bear with me, I know. Like that. So my shank is completely closed, and this means if you want, you can of course add a stinger hook here, if if if, if that what you what what you what you would prefer. Otherwise, you can you can uh, attach a wriggle tail to this, and th that that's a very good option, I think. So basically, I'm gonna add some tying thread here to make sure I have a nice and and uh, and good uh, bottom layer of of, uh, of tying thread to ensure that material has something to latch onto. And then we're gonna use a, a bundle of uh, a bundle of bucktail. First up, I'm gonna I'm gonna take some grey bucktail here. Uh, this is gonna be the tail part. So so we want not to start completely down where where the eye is because we want uh, to have the option of the wriggle tail. And in order to give it some some uh, some, uh, some uh, an option to swim, then uh, to move freely, we're gonna have the materials here. And so I tie in uh, a, a bundle of of bucktail. And this I'm gonna reverse tie. That means I'm gonna tie it so it pointing, it's pointing forward, and then I'm gonna turn it over, uh, because this is gonna be the tail part of the fly here. Then this will will actually make the bucktail stand up uh, and stand out a bit more. Cutting off all the stuff I don't need. Not gonna be too careful about that, you know. Just basically cutting it off so so it's it's. Uh, I'm not gonna cut it completely clean off like this. Just needed a bit more of pressure because it was starting to turn a bit on the on the shank here, like so. I'm gonna turn this backwards, just simply fold it backwards here with my fingers, like so. Hold everything in place and then tie all the way up to here. So I'm tying a lot of using some thread. That's also why it's it's nice to have a big, uh, a, a, a relatively thick thread for, for, for flies like this. So this is a 100, 100 DN uh, Vivus thread, very good, nice pike thread. So about that I'm gonna, you know, force it into submission, <laughs> I was going to say, with my with my fingers also, like so. And then I'm gonna take a, a, a piece of uh, a fluorescent fluoro yellow or electric yellow bucktail and do exactly the same with for this fly here. And uh, the the combination of uh, of this yellow and and gray really really looks awesome. Apply some tying thread here, like that. And uh, and it's easy to simply just hold down the gray one and uh, and then cut off all the all the yellow the yellow stumps. Again, you don't have to be that worried about any stumps here because it is a pike fly and we want it to be bulky, but but a little is 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 nice, is fine. Like so. Rinse and repeat, fold this backwards. And I must say these articulated flies, they swim very, very well and they, and look absolutely astounding in the water. Also, they're not that difficult to cast, uh, at least if you tie it like this. 
um, because uh, it's not it, it's bulky, but it's made uh, out of, uh, of materials that do not provide too big of a wind resistance. So basically, like this, and then we have the two first bundles of bucktail here, like so. And then we're going to use the next material. And this next material is really, really a cool, cool, cool thing. This is craft for um, uh, made into a dubbing loop. Uh, so, so it's 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 a thin metal wire with uh, with some bucktail and uh, and some fluorescent yellow fibers as well. And uh, and this is very, very nice to give bulk and uh, and give uh, uh, give the fly some volume. So I'm gonna tie this down as close to the bucktail as I can, like so. And then I'm gonna use, I have a very old, very beat up pair of scissors somewhere. These are here, because this wire is, um, we, can, we can just tie it down, of course. So we don't have to cut it with the scissors, like so. Again, I'm gonna make sure that the, there is a nice coating of tying thread to ensure that, um, that my materials has something to latch onto, like so. Then I'm gonna turn this. But uh, we're gonna use, in, in a package of these strings, there is eight. And, uh, and I use one, uh, the, the same one, three, t three different times on this fly. So, so really you get a lot of, a lot of volume for your, for, for your, for your, for your money with, uh, with these. Uh, because this, this single string is gonna be the one used for the, this entire fly. Uh, even though I'm gonna use it three times. As you can see, I do not turn it completely, uh, com completely close to one another, I make some, some room in between these turns here, like so. And that's because I, do, I want it to, to, to have some volume, but I do not want it to be too bulky and to, to soak up too much, uh, too much water. So basically, that's it. And th 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 that's a good thing to, to think about when you're, when you're designing and tying flies, that uh, always, always, there is a, 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 <laughs> a thin line between having, having enough and having too much. And, uh, Often uh, less is more on uh, on, uh, on fly tying materials, and one of the things that a lot of people have difficulty with this is is their flies simply get too bulky, and uh, and and then they do not look credible out in the water. They do not look like something that is actually uh, well worth eating because they simply just look like a big pile of gooey stuff. So like that, just gonna take. I couldn't find my dubbing needles. So I'm just using my finisher. <laughs> I use all, uh, I make all my wood finish by hand anyway, so so uh, it's nice to have a purpose for this at last, like so. And as you can see, the bucktail uh, and the colors here really really meld in and, and gives a nice tapering effect to this. And the the bucktail in the back is 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 really sh is is pointing out, and it's gonna it's gonna have some volume and and really really fill fill have 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 a big volume out in the water. So the next thing we're gonna do is um, is we're gonna take some uh, a bit of flash here, and I'm gonna use uh, the the narrow the ordinary uh, holographic flash abu in a in a color that's called midnight or no, no moonlight it's called. Uh, it's it's a blend of pearl and black and silver. Really really cool product from uh, from Hedron. And I'm um, gonna take a too big a bundle of this. There is some flash also in the uh, in the string. So basically I'm gonna do like this. And then I want this to be to be not completely even in length, the flesh of course, and then I want it to be all the way around here. So basically that's it. Like so. Cut off the list leftover flesh. You could have turned that over, but I do not want this to have uh, an insane amount of flesh. I just uh, added some saliva so I have this for, for, for later. There's no need to, to throw that away. Like so. Then I'm gonna add uh, two small uh, bundles of bucktail to finish off the, the, the look of this fly here. Again, I'm gonna have the gray uh, in the bottom and then, uh, and then the, uh, uh, the, the yellow one on top. But this I'm gonna not, I'm not gonna reverse tie this because uh, I want this to taper. So, so if I reverse tie it, it would simply stand too much out and I didn't, do not want that. So I just uh, fold it so it's gonna come around, all the way around the, uh, the fly here. And then I'm gonna cut off all this here. It's a fairly easy way and, and, a, and a universal way of making these uh, these articulated flies is, is the way I'm doing here. So so try this out with with this technique 
doing this technique and then uh, then the colors that that you like you prefer for your waters as well because as i said it's it's fairly easy and it really really looks outstanding in the water i'm gonna add some gold yellow not gold yellow of course ghoul is yellow in danish so that's why I, yeah <laughs> i misspoke a bit you could say like so i have the yellow i'm gonna cut off the leftover from this as well like that and as i was saying i really really think that this color combination is 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 pretty pretty awesome um, a guy called paul Mo monagahan i think and i have a bit of difficulty pronouncing his name made a very nice uh, articulated fly also with this color combination that really really looked awesome i think he called it gin and tonic or something like that it really was a cool fly so i wanted to do something of that theme because uh, his composition of the fly was, was really really great but i wanted to do uh, kind of like a fly that that had that same cool color combination but uh, but was 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 tied differently tied more to to my liking in in terms of of, of fishing um, uh, i like it very much if when you have flies that, of course, look cool, that's 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 nice, but also that and that really really um, really fishes fishes well and is designed to last a lot. Um, so I'm gonna take uh, one feather here, one grizzly saddle feather, on one side. This is gonna be the sideline of the fish, and uh, and these uh, these whiting are so long that I'm gonna use this uh, several times. This single feather I'm gonna use uh, several times. Uh, during during this tie, so so that uh, that I do not do not waste too much materials. Like this. Like that, and that's the first part. So I'm gonna do my whip finish here. Add some uh, some saber gap, and then the first part is is done. Where did I put my glue? Here it is. So, and then I'm gonna put this, take this out of the vise because then the first part here is, is done. This is gonna be the tail part. I'm gonna leave it over to the side to dry a bit, and then I'm gonna take a hook. Uh, this is the Arex uh, Bartless uh, Predator, lightweight predator in 6.0, and that's a really, really nice hook. Uh, my absolute, absolute favorite pike hook. I'm gonna take a, a, a fairly big uh, tungsten bead here. And then I'm gonna attach this to uh, to my hook already. We're gonna need that later in order to give this fly some uh, some uh, some uh, some nice and uh, nice and bouncy effect in the water compared with the tail. That's gonna be absolutely absolutely cool. So I attach the attach the tying thread again here. Again, I want to ensure that I have a very very nice and solid base of tying thread. So I'm just gonna go over this part a few times like so I think this could be a pretty cool uh, pretty cool trout uh, articulated fly as well if you if you if you downsized it of course I mean this is a 6.0 hook you're, you're, you're gonna be targeting some fairly fairly impressive trout with <laughs> with a fly of this size then I take a, a piece of, of monofilament this is 0.6 69 or 67 something like that that is durable enough that that it will last to to the pike's teeth uh, but also that um, that it, it really can stand some uh, some battering um, so I tied this down so so one end this is pointing that way and then I'm gonna take some of these 3d articulated beads and I'm gonna attach four of these to uh, to to this piece of uh, piece of line, you can do this also with uh, with uh, titanium and stuff like that. Uh, but but I, I like this uh, I, I like this 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 heavy monofilament for for this. So I attach four of these, and these are gonna be the ones that are gonna keep the tail in place, so it doesn't entangle too much hair. Um, and uh, basically, well, that's the purpose of these. Then I take my tail part, and. Uh, Put it, put the put the line through the the eye here, and and then I then I put my my line back through all four of these beads, like so. I see. I 
I have this. I have this the wrong way. It's gonna be the other way in order for it to to face the right way. It's not gonna be that much of a of a of a problem when 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 fishing. But it's 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 you know it's it's something. <laughs> it's the vanity in me that that tells me I need to do it this way. So so my my uh, my sideline my my saddle feather is is gonna be facing the 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 right way. Like that. So you see, you have this small here, and, and there's still room for some jig, wriggle effect, and also this will this will move in 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 the loop I've made from the monofilament. So I'm holding this down there, and then basically I'm just securing everything here with a lot of lot of tying thread. And uh, if you want this to be completely secure, you take some sabag up here. Just add a bit of that, and everything will stay where it's told. Um, I'm tying on top of the monofilament quite a long way up here because I want my uh, my uh, my hook to have a, a larger diameter uh, in order for me to not have to tie as much material and use as much thread. So basically I'm gonna take it all the way up there so I have about a bit more than half uh, a bit more than half, than half is, is what I've, I've tied on so far like this and I'm gonna go back here and then I'm gonna do well basically the same thing as we did on, on the tail part I'm gonna take some gray and yellow bucktail and um, and again this I'm gonna tie I'm gonna I'm gonna take as long bucktail as, as I can manage and bucktail is a, is, a, is, is a natural material so it's important that you get good quality bucktail I take great care in my shop to have have the best quality available uh, in bucktail and uh, and I, I go through uh, every package I get and if it's not up to standard then I simply return it to uh, to where I bought it from because I know for these uh, pike flies the length is is crucial basically really really is crucial so I'm gonna pull out all the sh really short fibers here like so and then I'm gonna measure it there is some that is a bit too long for my liking here and that's not a thing that's so important for, for fishing but it's important for the symmetry uh, of, uh, of, of the fly here and basically I'm gonna tie this I'm gonna put it around so fold it down so it's going to be all the way evenly distributed all the way around the 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 hook here and then I'm gonna clamp down on it like so so it's going to be kind of like a veil of, of bucktail all the way around my beads and uh, and because the bucktail stands so far out it's not gonna it's not gonna have any effect of of the movement of my of my tail part here and this is well basically this is well perfect <laughs> just like i wanted it to be i did not reverse tie this because i want this to be part of the body and i want this this part to to taper right and and give the the right shape of of this entire fly in order to make it more fish like cut off as much as I can of of all that leftover junk I don't need like so yeah, I think this looks exactly how I want it to be I'm gonna take a bundle of yellow again some choose some some uh, of, of the uh, choose some of, of the longest you have on, on your on your bucktail for, for this part of the fly um, it's not a gigantic fly, this one, but it is a fairly large, a fairly large fly, and uh, and, uh, and and a fly that swims really, really well. So I'm just gonna pull out all the all the stuff I didn't want. Again, making sure that it's it's relatively evenly distributed all the way around the. Uh, the hook shank like so and I made the yellow a bit shorter a bit shorter than the than the gray the, than the gray fibers and cut, cut all of this off and I'm gonna add a bit more flesh and here I can use the the the, the stuff I had left from before Again, try to distribute it all the way around, like so.
there's not much on your side. <laughs> it looks very nice on my side, so I'm just gonna take a few more strands uh, to make sure that there is some on your side as well. Yeah, that's better. Now there's someone for you, for you to appreciate as well. Okay. Then I'm gonna add uh, another uh, another piece of hackle. And as I said before, now I have this long feather, but the the the, the end of this is 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 you know uh, ruined. So so I'm gonna take my scissors and then I'm gonna carefully carefully cut so that it gets pointy again because then I can reuse this feather. And as you can see with my scissor, I simply made this feather into a usable feather once more. And um, I want this to be not completely as long as, as, as the first one, but approximately the same length. Tie this here, like so. And then I'm gonna use the other half. And actually, there is almost enough for for one more in in this feathers and uh, in, in this feather, and that's what I really, really adore about these uh, these whiting whiting saddles. Kiok makes some nice ones as well, uh, but but it's it's getting increasingly difficult to actually get some of those. So uh, so uh, when I when I got my hands on some whiting, I must say I really, really was impressed. These are just absolutely astounding. Regretfully, they do not make them in in as many colors. As, as the Kiag does, but but uh, if if you should only have one, then I would say the grizzly in in uh, that's not ha that has not been dyed is is <laughs> without a doubt one of my absolutely absolutely favorite colors. I'm just gonna add a bit of super glue here, make sure everything stays where it's placed like so. Good thing to add some super glue along the way when tying flies like this. It makes them. 10 times more durable. Well, basically, yeah, that looks nice also on your side. Luckily. And then I'm gonna take some of the, I'm gonna take the string here. As you can see, I have pretty much left of, uh, of this string still. Just tie this down here. Then I'm gonna move my thread forward up until around here. So I have about how much is this? I have about one and a half centimeters, something like that, maybe two centimeters uh, for, for the rest of this fly. Brush everything, keep this hackle, this, this craft fur hackle, so I have everything pointing backwards at each, each uh, turn of the hackle here, like so. Again, I do not turn this completely, com uh, I turn this loosely, kind of like if you made a rib. Uh, of of for for a salmon fly or something like that, because I need this for for the last part of uh, of the fly as well, uh, and and also not not to make it too too dense and uh, and 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 uh, and I want it to be to be I want it to be translucent, so that it looks more like a fish. And I'm going to turn this one or two more times, I think, like that. And now I need my old busted scissor here, like so. And I'm going to take my wood finish again. My dubbing needle, dubbing needle would be preferable, and comb out this this craft fur. And I really, really must say these these eight pair predator strings, craft fur strings, are truly, truly awesome. And they're durable as well because uh, because it's intertwined into into uh, into uh, into a metal thread. Then uh, then uh, then they really really first of all they they, they stay where where they're where they're placed, but also they, um, they uh, the material is is held very very firmly in a firm grip in in between those two. Uh, I don't need a wood finish here. You could do that, but I don't need one. I don't know why I did that. 
old Hepburn, perhaps. Now I'm gonna. No, I don't. Yeah, I'm gonna do a whip finish. I, I make a whip finish here in order to have my my uh, my gold head hidden in between the middle of, of the fly here. So uh, so I take a bit of uh, a bit of super glue. My tungsten bead here. Had a bit of super glue there. And then I push this backwards because I want this fly to finish off, um, not with the tungsten bead. I'm gonna I'm gonna have it here, so it's still in the front of the fly, so it will make the fly dive. But it's it's not gonna be in front of it because because I want this to be a, uh, a very good looking fly as well. <laughs> so so I'm I'm hiding my my tungsten bead uh, in between some uh, some other materials. And now it's it's off to to the last leg of of this fly, which basically is exactly the same steps as before gray bucktail olive bucktail uh, the flesh the feather and then i'm going to finish of making a head of, of the rest of the string so i take the uh, the gray bucktail so as you can see once you have one of these sections uh, down on this fly you actually have uh, the the uh, very very nice and and easy rinse and repeat pattern that looks Awesome fish as well, and uh, and is 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 highly durable as well. I see a lot of people using the uh, the uh, senu laser dubbing, uh, for instance, for, uh, for for heads on on these big uh, big predator flies. But but um, in my experience, uh, then it looks absolutely absolutely amazing. But it's not that durable. Um, if you catch a few pike on your flies, then then the head of these uh, of these uh, of, of flies with with the the dubbing head will be torn to shreds. They will simply simply stop looking big and voluminous uh, uh, rather rather fast. Uh, this fly is durable. This will last a lot a lot of fish, and um, and it will still look great even after your sixth or seventh pike. And that's important to me as well. Yeah, I want to sell some materials, but I want people to have flies that last as well. <laughs> uh, that was the gray part. Cut as close as I can here. So, I'm gonna take the yellow. Yellow. I must say this fluorescent yellow is 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 one of my all-time favorite colors. Not just for this, but also for for salmon, and it's also nice for perch, um, and and really really a a, a good-looking and and a well-fishing color. And uh, when you combine it with this gray. Uh, the intensity of it is 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 masked because it, it really really looks quite intense in the water but add it to the gray color uh, again thanks to Paul uh, for, for showing me this uh, for showing me this color combination on his YouTube if you haven't uh, seen him on, on YouTube then definitely you should Paul Monaghan I hope I pronounced that correctly Paul otherwise I'll owe you a beer or some wriggle tails or <laughs> Whatever, Paul. Let me know if you if you ever watch this video. Like that. Then I add a bit of flesh. Again, this this moonlight uh, color is is so awesome. The combination here of the pearl and and the opal and uh, and uh, and the black. I'm gonna make a bit longer, perhaps two thirds of the length here. Uh, I'm gonna use in in my first turnover. Ah, so it slipped a bit. I'm gonna turn the wrist over and tie this down on the way back. Ah, come on, get up there. Hmm. The, the flesh is 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 so uh, is is so slippery that it was a bit of a problem for again a bit of a problem for me to 
for some reason uh, <laughs> my video stopped recording so so I had to, to backtrack a bit um, and uh, but I've cut off the the bucktail uh, the yellow bucktail and uh, and now I'm gonna add the uh, gonna add the flash here I take a bundle of, uh, of, of the moonlight again I added a bit of the super glue in order to make sure that all the materials here stayed in place so I, I take this and then I, I, I spread it out so I can I can actually have it all the way around again like so and the, the flesh is going to be a bit longer than uh, it's going to be probably about two-thirds uh, the first part and then the second part the the the, the, the one-third that is left I'm going to turn over and tie down as well like so that, that way we're using all the flesh all the time and then I'm going to take uh, one more um, saddle feather here and I'm going to put one of, on each side again and these I'm going to make shorter than the previous ones. So I have uh, a short, a, fur, a bit longer and then the, and then, and, and then the tail that is, that is even longer. And that's really, really going to look uh, cool in the water because they will move independently and create a very good illusion of the, uh, of the sideline. Of a fish. Oh, stop entangling, goddammit. Just gonna cut them off, and it's probably gonna sort itself like so. And these I'm putting to the side, so I'm gonna I'm gonna use them for for a final touch on on this fly. Basically, everything is tied uh, down and and secured now. And then I'm gonna take the rest of the string here. And I'm gonna make the head part of the fly. So it's gonna be like that. And I have a big tying point here. I know that, but that's okay because that's only gonna add to uh, that's only gonna add to the tapering effect. So I, I get that the fly here gets tapered all the way down. And uh, if you've done this correctly, you will have about a third of of your of your string left. And I'm going to use all of that to, to create this last part, this head part of the fly. And here it's nice to have a hackle plier um, to, to, to attach to, 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 uh, to the end of, uh, of the string here. That makes things a bit more easy. So I'm turning uh, the head part here because I want that to be a bit more bit more bulky then I'm turning uh, I'm making my turns a bit closer to one another here in the last part to give this fly a nice nice looking uh, a dense head like so And now I have completely used the entire string. I'm gonna cut off this leftover stump of metal wire with my bad scissor. I know both my good and my bad scissor are the same looking, but there is a difference. <laughs> and I know which one is which. So I'm gonna pull out all the craft fur here. All the awesome looking part of the uh, string. Careful so not to to accidentally smash it, although it is strong as I said, so you don't need to be that careful. And that gives a nice, nice uh, finishing touch. Of course, now you can you can take this fly fishing, and it really looks well. It it works well, but but I would like to add something for for flavor. Um, I think that you can add an eye, of course, with some uh, some epoxy and stuff like that. But but what I experience a lot is that that the eyes on uh, made from from epoxy and stuff like that is simply just placed on top some some dubbing or some other artificial material tend to get smashed fairly fairly quickly by pike teeth. So I'm going to use an artificial jungle hook. And these are made from a very strong and very durable material. I'm not saying these will cannot be busted by pike teeth because 
well, basically nothing can withstand pike teeth uh, f indefinitely. But these uh, these are fairly durable. They're fairly strong, and they look awesome on the fly. They give a light, a, a lot of contrast as well. So I'm gonna add one of these to each side here, um, and they're not that expensive. Uh, and, and you can use those because they're so easy to, to attach. Then you can use those uh, a lot of the times on, on pike flies. And it's something I'm going to do a lot more of, I think. Because I really, I really like how they look on, uh, on flies like this. It gives it kind of like a classical look. It's not something that is completely necessary. But as I said, I'm a, I'm, I'm a bit of a sucker for detail when it comes to pike flies. Uh, I do fish a lot with, with very simplistic flies as well. But, but sometimes, well, you, you, you just gotta play play with stuff <laughs> and this is uh, this is uh, one of the times so as a finishing touch I'm gonna add two two more saddle feathers on top here that's gonna be basically they're gonna gonna be imitations of uh, of having this fly have have a a, a, a a more dark back like like real fish have so I take the uh, the feather I used before and I cut this into so it's, it's gonna be tapered again as, as I did two or three times before here, in order to save on materials. And I do not want this to be uh, all the way down the fly. I want this to be to be a natural part of the fly, but not to be completely all the way down to the tail. And I want it to, to lay on top here, kind of like, you know, a, not a roof, but something equivalent to that. My feather is not folding in the right direction. Ah, that looks fairly nice. I'm gonna take the other feather, and regretfully, this other feather has a has a has a bad bend in it. So this will be nice for the body, but it will not do for 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 having on top here. So I have to I have to take a new feather for this. Like that. I took one of the shorter ones on on the saddle, and I must say these these whiting saddles are truly truly amazing. There are just an enormous amount of feathers. If you want, and, and you want to add symmetry to this, you can add add a, add a, a, a grizzly feather on the, on the lower part of this fly as well. But that kind of defeats the point, because um, I'm adding these to have a darker, a darker uh, top side of the fly than, than, uh, than underside. And um, so I'm, I'm just gonna have mine on top here. Like this, I'm gonna make a whip finish. And well, Add some super glue and uh, and it's done. Really, really a nice, nice, cool-looking pattern that swims awesomely and uh, and will compared to a lot of other stuff. Do not use that many materials if you want to tie something like uh, some some something articulated. I haven't dubbed this yet, but if you have any good suggestions, please, please uh, feel free to comment on that down uh, down below, and uh, and I will pick one of uh, one of the names uh, <laughs> you added there. So well, that's me signing off. Thanks for for watching.